Welcome to this video tutorial, which will explain how to use the Spot It tool. Spot It tool is part of Spot, which is a three-year EU-funded project under the Horizon 2020 program, which is focused on the study of problems related to cultural tourism. And this specific tool looks at the case study area of Bichian Valley, which is part of the Jordan River Valley in the north of Israel. So this Spot It tool can be used by lots of different parties to try and understand different aspects of cultural tourism in the study area. This can be simply from exploring different types of attributes which are located on the map, or it can also be used if, if someone would like to explore some sort of cultural heritage initiative, for example, open up some sort of new site, such as a winery or otherwise. So today, this tutorial will explain simply how to use the map and then in more detail, how to use the map for if you were looking to open up some sort of new site. So this is the landing page when you open up the tool that you'll see here. And you can, first thing to notice is that you can see there's a lot of different kinds of information which is uh, already displayed. If you'd like to zoom in and zoom out on the map, you can either do so using your mouse or in the top left-hand corner, you'll see that you have a plus or minus arrow. On the right-hand side, you'll see a legend. Now, each one of these legends has the actual layer with the icon to explain what, what that represents. So for example, you can see here all of the purple beds represent accommodation, the fork and knife icons represents restaurants. If you'd like to add or remove different layers to the map, you can do so up on the right-hand side by clicking the layer list, the layer icon. This will open up the layer list. And you can see here that many of these layers are already active and some of them are not active. So to select or deselect different layers, you can do so by clicking the little icon on the left-hand side. And now see that all the layers are deselected and you can reselect them again by just clicking the same icon. You'll see here that this is the boundary. This is the study area boundary, which we will be focusing on today. And there's lots of different information on here, which will be relevant depending on what it is you would like to use this tool for. For example, we can locate picnic sites, tourist attractions, national heritage sites, parks, hiking trails, restaurants, accommodation, cultural heritage sites. And also we can look at ecological cultural and other conflict zones. If I click on that, you'll see on the map is highlighted a red boundary with a black, black crosshatch. If we go back up to the legend and click on legend, you'll see that all of those, those layers which are selected are now visible on the map. And you can scroll up and down on this legend to be able to actually pinpoint what those are. For example, cultural, uh, cultural um, ecological and other conflicts, you can see is represented here. And this could be important if we are looking to open up some sort of new cultural her heritage initiative, we might want to avoid those areas, for example. And depending on what sort of cultural heritage initiative we're thinking about, we might want to locate that close to, for example, accommodations, restaurants, parks, um, or otherwise. If you go back up to the layers icon here, if you'd like to rearrange how this map is displayed, you can do so by clicking on the three little icons, three little buttons to the right-hand side of the layer. If you click on that, you can move down or move up. And what that'll do is it'll move this layer above or below the preceding layer. And that can be important if you want to, if some things are of more importance and you want to locate them higher up on the map, then that's how you would do this. And again, you can deselect and select any layer which is relevant. On the left-hand side on the top, you can actually search to find an address or a place. You can use the measurement tool if you'd like to measure on the map. You can share the tool with colleagues or collaborators via this link, or you can embed that in a website. You can click on these four tiles here to actually change the base map, which is visible on the map. And that can be relevant for all sorts of purposes.
So I just reactivate some different layers which are going to be of relevance for anyone wanting to use this tool for more um, detailed purposes. So for the rest of the tutorial, we're going to take a case study example of, of um, wanting to support some sort of new cultural her heritage initiative. So we're going to want to open up a winery uh, in this region. And, and we want to use this tool to try and understand where's the best place to, to locate that winery and how many people can we expect that that winery will, will um, how many people will attend that winery each year. So we're going to leave accommodation, restaurants, cultural heritage sites, ecological, cultural and other conflicts on there. Hiking trails will also be important as well as parks. Uh, picnic sites, tourist attractions, and other natural heritage sites. We're also going to be interested in slope because we want to locate this winery at a higher elevation and we also want to locate it at, at, in a hotter temperature. So to do that, we're going to look at mean temperature. And you'll see there that mean temperature is located above slope on the map. If we wanted to move that up or down, we could do so using these three buttons here. So on the top left, these icons here, the suitability analysis, and the number of visitors prediction. So these represent more detailed aspects of this tool. And these, each one of these icons is actually has behind it some sort of modeling. So first, if we click on the suitability analysis, what this tool will help us do is, is decide how suitable a certain area on the map is for the type of cultural heritage initiative that we want to that we want to place. So each one of these five different boxes adds up to a weight, a total weight of 100. At the moment, these are all split evenly, so 20% each. We have accommodation, so accessibility to accommodation, how important is that? The weight of restaurant accessibility, so how, how important is it to be accessible to restaurants? The weight of thermal comfort, so the temperature, the weight of the priority to land use, and then the weighting of zoning priority. So in the case of this winery, for example, just as a case study, it's important that we're gonna be close to accommodation. It's not gonna be quite as important that we're close to other restaurants um, and thermal comfort will be important. The other ones in this case are gonna be less so, so let's put them at 5% each. Now it's important that these numbers add up to 100, and in this case they do. I'm going to click Run. These different weights will then be submitted to a model, which will, will execute, and will display on the map. I'm going to just deselect slope for now. And you'll see that this new layer has been added to the map. And at the top of the layers list, you'll see suitability analysis output. If we go back to the legend, you'll see that this suitability analysis has some different uh, information on the legend now. So yellow represents less suitable and red represents most suitable. And then the different sort of color codes in between represent more moderate suitability. So this can be important for us to try and understand where it is we would want to place our, um, our new winery. So we can go back to the layers and we can actually move the suitability analysis down. We'll do this so that the different sort of other pieces of information can then be displayed on top of the suitability analysis, just so that we can take those into consideration when we want to make a decision as to where it is that we're going to put our winery. So you can see here that at the moment, most of the central and southern region seem to be quite suitable, suitable for our, our place in our new cultural heritage initiative. So Beforehand, I said that we wanted to look at a higher elevation. Um, so the higher elevations, if we just uh, select slope and deselect suitability analysis, we can see here that we sort of initially pinpointed this region over towards the southwest. So that's the sort of area I want to be looking at. But we also want to make sure that the suitability analysis also pinpoints to that area. And it seems to suggest that this area is of, of moderate to high suitability. So we're going to be looking at this area to position our new winery, um, and we want to try and understand how many people we can expect to be there. So let's just zoom in. And for now, I'm going to deselect the suitability analysis output. 
because we know this entire area is going to be quite uh, useful to us. So we're going to place our winery on the western boundary. So this inside the inside the, the study area, but not within one of the, the conflict zones. So we're going to select an area just to the south of the conflict zone, which has accessibility to restaurants, as we said before, accessibility to accommodation, because the suitability analysis pinpointed this area as suitable. So if we go back up over and close this suitability analysis, and we select the other tool, which is number of visitors prediction. So if we click on this, what this tool will instruct us to do is to pinpoint an area on the map where we would like to place our new site. To select the type of site, the capacity that we expect to get per year or the capacity that we're going to be able to accommodate, whether or not there's food and whether or not we have a souvenir shop present. So first off, you click this icon on the left, the point icon, and we're going to select an area just close to the road, close to this picnic site, south of the conflict zone and in an area of high suitability as defined by the suitability analysis. So you see there that it marks a pin on the, on the map. We can then select winery as our site type. And based on some analysis that we could have done prior, we estimate that we're gonna be able to have a capacity um, of 400 people. Okay, so that's a, a capacity one time. There will be food, there will not be souvenirs. And we can click run. And this will perform the model. And, and based on that, and based on the inputs which we gave the model, we can estimate that around 27,000 annual visitors are likely to attend that winery. And we can also look at different types of sites, for example, agricultural tours or arts and crafts. And we can look at different types of capacity also. And if you want to look at a different site, we can again, click on the point, for example, choose an area over here, change the capacity and then run again. And this model will re-predict the number of visitors where we would expect, that we would expect to get in that site. So that's an overview of how to use this tool. If you are looking to find funds to support other, you know, support cultural heritage initiatives, you can click on the link here at the top. And that link will um, take you to the European Commission site, which will look uh, to show you funding opportunities for cultural heritage and open calls. You can also look to share. If you do have an idea for a new cultural heritage site and you would like to share that, you can open up the link here at the top and open in browser. And this will direct you to a page where you can actually select the location of the site. You can give the site's theme. You can look at the value or why this is interesting to tourists from abroad or which, which sort of tourist it's interesting for, add a description, and you can also upload your name, email, and other pictures. And when you submit that, that will then be located, that will then be sent and located on the map. So again, that's a brief overview of the Spotted tool, um, which is a cultural heritage initiative. And that will end today's video tutorial.